it's Black Clover! <laughs> Yo, another video again on the Ketchup Experience, people. Well gone. With today's Black Clover Ketchup Experience video, we'll be covering the Star Festival and the Royal Knight Selection exam. Of course, disclaimer, I'm actually much further in my Black Clover Ketchup Experience than this video. But given that the current arc that I'm on with the elves and all that jazz and blues isn't actually over and I want to cover the section where they storm the Eye of the Midnight Sun's hideout to the end of the arc um, in a video by itself, I just decided that, yo, Star Festival and Royal Knight Selection Exam, which I think is actually adequate enough, adequate content for a video by itself and here we are. So of course, welcome back. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome guys. I recently got into Black Clover, like relatively speaking. So I've been covering my catch-up experience for Black Clover. The initial aim was to compare it to Naruto and kinda see what the criticism about it being a copy of it was all about. But at this point, I've fully settled into the series, uh, well, settling, settled into it being its own thing from my um, point of view. So I. Don't really go into it with the aim of that anymore, but I still make comparisons here and there. But you get the idea. You get the idea. So yeah, again, respect for tuning in. Welcome to the new and returning subscribers. If you're new here, of course, hit that subscribe button. We cover up Black Clover, Boruto, and all other miscellaneous madness that we do here on Sanjo Uchiha. So <laughs> without further ado, let's get right into my thoughts on the Royal Knight Selection Exam and the Star Festival. So guys, I must say, starting with the Star Festival, if nothing else, I found it very entertaining. The portrayal at the end where Yuno and Asta is concerned, they, I see that Tabata has really been painting a real sense of progression where, like, from Asta and Yuno's point of view. But I'm probably getting ahead of myself here. So. Starting off the festival, of course, we do learn that it is a ceremony, like the culmination of the stars that were awarded to the various Magic Knight squads over the last year. And basically, it's a festival to announce the top ranking squads, essentially, for this um, Magic Knight... Um, uh, what, what? what do I even say? This Magic Knight financial year. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't really correlate with finance, but you get it. <laughs> I just wanted something stupid to say, so yeah. But yeah, it was it was fun and it was nice seeing Kahono and Kyoto again. Um it was a nice reminder that even though we are past that arc, even though it wasn't really that long ago, we only had the witches for us before, but at the same time it's nice to see those characters again feel like they are still somewhat relevant. There's some connective tissue between that arc and this arc and even the experiences we had in the witches forest arc given the nature of the witch queen's magic so seeing kahono and kiato come back in and also making use of the same magic that was used to heal his arms to actually heal kahono's um throat and kiato's leg i thought that was a decent move to at least connect everything now as i said if nothing else i think the star festival is actually very entertaining and fun but then again that can be said about Black Clover <laughs> on a whole, I feel, if nothing else. Now, yo, honestly, it was it was fun even getting some, I guess, I guess I could say the cliche at this point, when it comes on to Black Clover, where we get some comedic interactions, or not even necessarily comedic, but we get some interactions with some characters that, we're, that are not necessarily on screen a lot, and then we get more context for their backstory. In this case, we learn more about Charlotte and <laughs> how Yami actually, you know, saved her, quote unquote. If you've watched the arc, you know. I'm pretty sure most of you watching this video have watched the arc, so... Yeah, <laughs> Yami continues to save the ladies by just not giving a shit apparently. <laughs> so, but but not necessarily one hundred percent not giving a shit. But you get what I mean. So there's that. Um, one thing I like about this arc in terms of it transitioning into the Royal Knight Selection Exam, I think it starts to tackle something I've wanted to see with Black Clover ever since, you know, me establishing that a major theme of the series is classism and, you know, just this emphasis on your social class, at least within the Clover Kingdom. And, well, based on what I've seen so far, it might even extend to all the other kingdoms. Well, I've only seen Diamond so far, so... 
but yeah and that's the fact that you have characters like Fagolian, like Julius, um, just for instance, those two who I feel represent characters who are beyond the, 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 the theme, beyond the stereotype of classism, who kind of stand at the opposite end of the spectrum than those who really focus on that, like the royals. I wanted to know what they were doing about it, you know? And honestly, even the dialogue, it's short, but it's a start where we have, you know, Asta and Yuno getting up on stage. We have Seke trying to play them down and Julius just trying to put the point across. It doesn't matter that they're, you know, commoners. And even the whole theme in the Star Festival as well, from even Noelle's interaction with the commoner girl that who who had lost her well she had lost her mom it was very refreshing to see because as i said it's something i've been kind of dying to see them kind of explore the characters who aren't at that end of the spectrum about you know all about classism and everything how they feel about it and what they're doing about it so in this sense we didn't get like something in your face but it was a start for me and i love the direction it was going in regarding going forth with the Royal Knight Selection exam. Now, the idea, no, of course it's a transition into a tournament arc. And <laughs> if I'm being honest, tournaments have always been like a quick and easy way to introduce new characters, if I'm being honest. Yeah, and while it's an easy way to really and truly introduce characters, at the same time, this tournament arc for lack of a better term, it really still connects back to the overarching plot that's, you know, going to be happening after this arc. You know, we have to select 20 persons, well, they didn't explicitly 20, but, you know, the persons who perform the best and are chosen from the, the whole tournament are going to be the squad of royal knights that actually storm the Eye of the Midnight Sun's fortress. So essentially the best of the best of the royal knights currently. And I thought that was a good idea to at least you know, it, it's nothing too like complex or in depth. It's just a decent way to really and truly explore the abilities of the current set of magic knights, as well as connecting connecting it back to the overall plot. I feel while still juggling some character drama at the same time, interpersonal character drama, which I felt was also solid as well. Now, before even jumping to the royal knight selection exam, I must say, yo. <laughs> Mareliona Vermilion <laughs> is what Sonade and Sakura wish they could be. <laughs> I don't think I need to say more. Oh shit, I'm forgetting the hot springs trip before um before the selection exams. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, but that was a nice little few chapters. Um just to see for example with Asta. One thing I really like about Black Clover, like when a new mechanic is introduced, I realize that it's always almost referenced time and time and time and time again. Like Asta's ability to now sense key has played like such a crucial role um, for his battle tactics and strategies going forward. So even with the Hot Springs trip training, uh, it was pretty cool to see him using his key sense to tap into a form that he didn't have conscious control over, but he still had an idea based on his feeling. Like there is thing, there are things that happen within the story, but Tabat has set up such he set context for it beforehand that when they do happen, he's like, oh, but this this makes sense. So that's what I actually love about the story going forward um, at this point as well, and even even before this, it's it's been a almost a consistent thing I realized with the story that context like little things that you would probably say call out as nonsense or assholes or bullshit in like probably other series um even if you would want to call it that in black clover you can't really because tabata has laid the foundation he's he's made you know for example something that i'll make a big point of in my next black clover video is is um noel's <laughs> Noel, the silver family basically reconciling. Noel and Nozel, 
and the fact that Noelle has there and her power boost. But everything kind of goes back to the, the, the statement Tabata made, well, in the first mission where in Saucy Village where he kind of explains how do mages actually level up and everything I feel can be tied back to that in a sense when it comes down to the characters leveling up. But that's just all like one major example what I'm trying to say here in terms of there's just context for a lot of the decisions I see Tabata making. They are established beforehand and I actually like it. So the characters leveling up um, is good. Love Mary Leona. Yo. <laughs> Yo, she just, she just, she just bad for that. I'll say, I love seeing strong female characters in a shonen at that. So, there's that. Um, shit. So yeah, the Hot Springs trip training was pretty good. Um, very fun, very entertaining. Can't, I don't have much complaints about it. I love the moment between Noelle and Mariliona. That was good. The comedy was unsure as per usual. So there's that. Now, in terms of the Royal Knight selection exam itself, I think the thing that I mainly love about it is, apart from you know, the fights are cool, but the interpersonal and even the internal um, conflicts that the characters are resolving or overcoming. Um, of course, we're introduced to the character of Zora, <laughs> which I love it. Um, of course, I'm almost at, I'm just about episode 19 in the anime, so I realize it's Johnny, Johnny Young Bosch, that's how you pronounce it, right? Voices him, so it's kind of cool having that Ichigo voice. But um, the art for me really continues the, the small tidbits um, that I've wanted to see, as I mentioned in the Star Festival section where you have characters at the opposite end of the spectrum. They're not pieces of shit, just to just call it plain and simple that. And the fact that you have characters like Julius who don't really resonate with the, with the royals in terms of how they act. It makes sense for characters like him to it wouldn't no it wouldn't make sense for characters like him to not be doing anything to help um, you know better the, the whole classism situation in the Clover Kingdom. So with the Royal Knights section, I really appreciated seeing that being built on through Zora's character and his flashback with his father in terms of kind of establishing what it really means to really and truly be a magic knight and just kind of expound on the fact that classism doesn't really your social class shouldn't really matter and of course this kind of builds up more so again in the it's built upon again in the following arc well in the following section when they storm the eye of the midnight sun's beast you know with the fight between um patri and um julius but i'll get to that in the next video but i kind of just say that to say yo i really appreciated it and it started just diving into content I really wanted to see given the nature of these characters um, so yeah I love Zora I love the fights of course the interpersonal drama between like even Finral and Longris, Noel and Solid yo yo these these are the things I really love to see and even the fact that the tournament was set in teams of three I thought was a great idea because time and time again we've seen that one of Black Clover's biggest strengths, I feel, has always been the team battles. There is, I feel like the decision, the decision to actually do that, kind of on Tabata's end, is like the perfect way to capitalize on the strengths of all the characters involved in overcoming an obstacle where individually, each person on the team shouldn't be able to actually, you know, solve on their own. Just, it kind of eliminates the... The possibilities of Aspel, you know, and it also makes for interesting choreography and seeing how the characters actually bounce off each other in terms of strategy. Um, even like say Asta's team, um, which is an interesting team between him, Mimosa, and Zora, which was fun to see their battles. Um, yo, Jello, the whole Royal Knight selection exam I felt was was pretty solid, and it really adds to. The fact that through even Zora, the decision for him to actually comment on the weaknesses of each team, well, more or less, once they lose, was actually good as well. Because overall, I know I'm repeating this, but overall the whole theme, it kind of culminates in this slowly but surely dispelling the notion of classism. I keep saying that, but it's just true and it really resonated with me. So that's what I actually love to see in the arc. Now, in terms of interpersonal drama, yo, Noel beating Solid 
honestly very satisfying i feel like even though it's like 120 some chapters in there give or take it still feels like a long time coming and just the progression of noel's character as i said one of the main female characters especially when i'm as i said comparing it to naruto it is highly refreshing because there is this tangible sense of progression in noel's character that we've seen from the mission in saucy village up until this point and even her even connecting that back to what I, the example i gave early in terms of context it's about a really really and truly does a great job of establishing in terms of the rules he's set out to in terms of growth for mages um i think the link back to noelle and her evolution in terms of her mental health through you know establishing a family through the black bulls is really beautiful and i love to see it and it's like noelle beating solid was like confirmation that the decision to you know establish a family with the black bulls mental health and how it relates back to the context that you know tabata set up with the rules of growth it all makes sense in the grand scheme of things it all comes together for i think a decent showing so yeah that's <laughs> i love that um am i forgetting anything of course funeral longress yo trust me <sighs> shit i <laughs> went <laughs> went blank there but funeral honestly stepping up to the plate and improving himself um i like how there are just so many contained well i wouldn't say self-contained but almost self-contained but inter you know interweaving intertwined um character arcs progressing at the same time which is always refreshing to see i love that funeral had this kind of character arc he's changing his appearance so he's trained he's, he's tried and just a whole interpersonal drama with him and his family and going up against longris i thought was was pretty good of course asta magna and just the black bulls in general stepping in to protect him once longris was about to actually <laughs> wipe him from existence great great moment as well to say the least anime wise that was sick as well um yo honestly in the grand scheme of things as well julius amazing character amazing in terms of the whole stereotype of um how should i put it like you know the overpowered strong leader on the the good guys team who you know eventually doesn't really do much for most of the story kind of in you know, just that management position and when he fights he makes a crazy showing but might die like relatively as he relatively soon after he tries even though that kind of is what kind of <laughs> happened with um patrick i love the involvement and the proactiveness of julius's character his involvement in the story and what he tries to accomplish um almost each and every arc because even the decision the alternative motive behind the exam for him to single out somebody who's potentially acting as a traitor i thought was a good move as well so just the proactiveness of his involvement which is that kind of redundant saying both of those words i thought was was good as well um asta love the fact that even though he has this power black asta eh, black asta and the fact that it's not this Oh wow, I have this new form. It's just wiping the floor with everybody. It's not the solve all problems kind of transformation at the same time. It doesn't push the choreography and teamwork aspect of the series um, to the side either. So that was, I, I really love that fact. And it actually places emphasis on what was already established. I feel with like Asa's abilities being anti magic in a world where magic is everything. You'd think having anti magic would. <laughs> with the op i mean in some cases he is kind of overpowered but honestly it doesn't feel that way asta is not the end all be all of the series and i thought that was good establishing that in this arc even through the teamwork aspect as well so 
there is that. Of course, you know, and his progression is decent to see, even though I'm still waiting to get more on you know's character as well. Um, I, I, I've been watching, I've been seeing some comments, you know, frequenting some other Black Clover videos, and yeah, persons have said that, you know, it kind of feels like, the, even though the rival dynamic to me is pretty damn refreshing between him and Asta, compared to Naruto and Sasuke, I feel like where he drops or falls short compared to Sasuke. It doesn't feel like... We really take Yuno out. Yeah, I mean, it's... His existence is so in the link to Asta. I feel like there needs to be something more for him. And I think I'm gonna get that. I think most of you watching this can, can say that. So, yeah. But it was fun seeing him. And even getting the backstory of other characters like Rill, the youngest captain was decent as well um shit I i'm pretty sure by now you know guys I'm, i've always been free flowing well more so this video because i don't even i didn't even make any notes <laughs> on the arc but um so i'm free flowing here i'm kind of just doing everything from memory but for the most part i enjoyed the royal knight selection exam at the end of the day um, it continues building on a theme that I've wanted to see given the theme of classism in the series as well as fulfilling and building on the interpersonal drama and conflicts that the characters are going on and actually progressing it while making, well, ensuring that the strengths of the series are still unsure while ensuring that newly introduced combat elements like Black Asta I feel like I keep saying that with an O, <laughs> Block Asta. <laughs> Block Asta don't actually, you know, make newly introduced elements or characters or, you know, how the narrative is executed actually useless. It doesn't make them useless. So, overall, between these two sections with the training with the hot springs, I think we have a solid arc or two arcs to say the least. If you really, I guess, pick it up or like I've done here, I hope. <laughs> so, yeah. But if I've missed out anything, because this video I'm pretty sure is getting like super long, um, let me know in the comment section. We can always discuss it. I'm looking forward to actually covering the storming of the Eye of the Midnight Suns um, BS to the end of the arc. I'm actually on chapter 185 as we speak, with episode with being on episode 89. So. Slowly but surely, we're almost, we're almost caught up. So, yeah. But if you've reached this far, thanks for tuning in, guys. Of course, be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell for more Black Clover dissections, our <laughs> catch-up experience videos. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.